Anunnaki fans, are you ready to brave the wild with me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan? Brave the Wild is available on all of your favorite podcasting apps and also, of course, on the Hockey Podcast Network. I thank you so much, Dylan and Kyle, for having me on board there. And, of course, our sponsor, DraftKings, you'll be hearing from later. Um, I, of course, thank each and every one of you for downloading and listening to this show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board with you once again today. The sun is shining. It's beautiful. The, the It's a little bit chilly. And the little thin clouds out there. There's your little weather report. And you're going to probably hear some tweeting in the background because the windows are open. Why? Because it's spring. Even though it's cold out or chilly out, we'll say. Not cold. A little chilly. Uh, it's spring, dang it. So, <laughs> and uh, it, the, the sun makes it pretty warm in here when I'm doing a podcast. And I don't want to sweat when I'm doing a podcast. That's kind of weird. But with all of that said, the Minnesota Wild had a halfway decent week. A little bit of gambling again. Uh, this time it didn't pay off, but I'm, I mean, if, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Anybody really complaining about making that decision? I don't know. I mean, why the hell not at this point? It is what it is. Um, but the Wild go 2-1 and one versus San Jose, Vegas, and the Ottawa Senators. <laughs> Today's episode's kind of a milestone, 350. Um, are we going to talk about the games as much as uh, topics surrounding the Wild? It's going to be kind of similar to last week's show, in a sense, of course. Wasn't that magnificent? Uh, thank you so much, Derek. Derek Felska, of course, Crease and Assist, at Crease and Assist, and the Crease and Assist podcast with, uh, of course, Derek. Uh, <laughs> uh, Teresa Ferries and Kalisha Townsell, who's uh, busy at the moment, so she's not been on the shows of late. So it's mostly uh, Derek and Teresa. So, they do a fantastic job. I don't think, yeah, no, unfortunately, they didn't do a show last week, unless I'm crazy and missed it somehow, but I don't think so. Usually, the automatic downloads, uh, you know, there, there it is. So, um, hope all is hope all's going well there. Maybe he was a little bit like, okay, I did <laughs> I talked enough on Brave the Wild. Yeah, we were long-winded, but it's okay. It's fun. It's not like it went for three hours or anything like it did one time in State of the State of the Wild on a beautiful July afternoon. It's like, I want to go outside. <laughs> it was fun, though. I mean, imagine if it was raining. Then it's like, okay, who cares, right? <laughs> I know, I'm just giving you crap there, Derek. Um, but no, um, obviously, we've had some fantastic shows together in the past. And obviously, this last one was no exception. It was it was a blast. So I just want to thank you again. That was a lot of fun, great information. And um, yeah, <laughs> obviously want to thank uh, Dylan and Kyle, Hockey Podcast Network, uh, always again for having me on there. Uh, so, generally speaking, the Minnesota Wild are playing, you know, they're kind of hanging in there, so to speak, which is what people like to tell you when they don't want to give you a promotion. Hang in there. It's like, yeah, thanks. Get them, you know, just, 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 just yeah, that. Anyhow, I'm not <laughs> getting into that right now. That's old, old, but still annoying. Uh, San Jose Sharks, kind of, you know, old and annoying, too. Three, just kidding, 3-1 to one win there. The 2-1, to one, you know, pull the goalie loss versus Vegas. I'll get to that in a second. I'm going to try to not babble too much on this show because there's going to be a ton of fan interaction. There's two lightning rounds. There's a, there's the classic Derek Felska lightning round and the Tom Hayen lightning round hath returned dada. So you're going to hear two lightning bolts today. Oh, yeah. So I better shut up, I better shut up and talk. Does that make sense? Yeah, I better get moving. I better giddy up is what I'm trying to say. The March of Boldy continued, getting his 25th goal of the year very early in the third period. Mikhail Granlin getting his 11th on uh, just some, I don't know, it was a wonky, dumb mistake type of a situation. But Gustafson stood strong, and our best friend Ryan Harmon added an empty netter, 19th goal of the season. I'm, I've got some things to say about Ryan Harmon. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Mikhail Granlin, only 11 goals on the year. Again, like I always talk about wild rejects filled all over the Sharks, and notice how not good they are. Um, Luke Cunning, his name was brought up on the uh, Judd's Hockey Show this past week. Um, how he's, yeah, he's like, I don't know. He's nothing what a lot of people thought he was going to be. It doesn't help that he's had multiple ACLs, if I'm remembering correctly. It's been multiple, right? It's not just one. So, I don't know. He's basically like a fourth line kind of a player, even though he might be playing in a better role than that. Uh, he did win 8 out of 12 faceoffs, so that's impressive. And Nico Sturm won 8 out of 9 faceoffs. Nico Sturm. Um, again, who is a, a bottom six at best, unfortunately. Um, he has skills and all that. Uh, nice college player, believe it or not, even though he's not from the U.S., but uh, this and that. And then Mike Hoffman's had off-ice issues and such. And, I don't know, it, it is what it is. And he's, it's just kind of sad, you know, the way things have gone. 
these are these are some players that were fairly talented. Granlund, 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 Cunning, and such. Nico Sturm, um, Kalen Addison. Yeah, there he is. Almost forgot about him. And Vlasic has been there forever. I always call him the Pickle Man because Vlasic pickles. Isn't that cute? I believe that's a Minnesota pickle. No, that's Gedney. Okay, that's that's the advertisement. Uh, yeah, Kalen Addison, 17 total points on the year. Just I don't know, nothing to get too excited about. He's a minus. Uh, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a minus 34. Wow, <laughs> minus. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> but I suppose I've seen minus 40s and juniors and such. Maybe your team is just horrendous. Like, you might be an okay player, but, I mean, you know, like you're losing every game, like 5-1 five, five to one or something. Oh, boy. I've been on basketball teams like that. Let me put it that way. You know, not exactly 5-1, to one, but kind of like that. Um, yeah, you know, the Sharks suck, and they're, they're the minnows. They are what they are. The wild win, the wild win, and not even very pretty, actually, it was... I don't know why this was, like, as close as it was. It's really lame. But let's just move on. What a lame game that was. Vegas was a much better played game, but the Wild didn't score um, against Logan Thompson. It took, like, forever, and it was frustrating. Well, it took a while, but, of course, the best player on the team does get the power play goal with two of the other better players on the team, arguably the second best player on the Wild, Brock Faber, with his 34th assist. Matt Boldy, equal to that with his 34th assist. He's, you know... He's kind of like the he's kind of like the sidekick, you could say. He's the Yari Curry to Kaprizov's Gretzky. I can't call him the. Uh, well, yeah, maybe Brock Faber is like the Paul Coffee. Boldy is he the Yari Curry? Yeah, yeah, he's gonna have to be because he, you know he's not Messier. Come on, Boldy wouldn't be Messier level. So hopefully, hopefully, maybe Yurov will be the Messier to Kaprizov's Gretzky or Kaprizov's the Messier. Who knows? But um, whatever. Why am I even getting into that? <laughs> have you ever heard of the, uh, have you ever heard of the 80s Oilers, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, I always say that. Yeah, they were pretty good, actually. They were, and then, and then, and then it ended in the stupidest way you could ever imagine. Um, traded because, traded to Los Angeles because your wife wants to be an actress? Oh, okay, that's great. Why didn't Michael Jordan get traded to the Clippers or something, too? Because his wife wanted to be an actress. Yeah, they still would have divorced. Anyhow, sorry for that smart crack. Uh, Jonathan Marchessault with 40 goals this year. Now, he's been a 25, 25-ish, 29-ish goal kind of guy forever. He's been awesome. He was great with the even with the Florida Panthers. Uh, a, a gritty player who is beyond a gritty player. Kind of, you know, like a middle six who can play on the top line at times as well. He's kind of a, a Mr. Everything for the Vegas Golden Knights. Like, he's what Doug West was for the Minnesota Timberwolves, but in a much happier form because Doug West went through a lot of hell watching this, you know, with a franchise that was losing out of the get-go. Um, what was our best season? That uh, was like the first year was like arguably our best year for like five or six years. And after that, the Wolves were just putrid. And Doug West was there for all of it. But he was kind of a Mr. Everything, offense and defense. Kind of like what Marchesall has been with the uh, biggest Golden Knights, <laughs> winning a Stanley Cup. And, man, that's unbelievable. Winning a winning a Stanley Cup, winning the Conn Smythe. Um Oh, what, what, what a beautiful what a beautiful story. Um, 40 goals. He did get the overtime goal as uh, Mr. John Hines pulled the goalie again to try to go for it. But here's the thing. You had to. You had to. It's like going for it on fourth down where if you don't, you know, if you punt the ball away, the game's over. It's kind of like that. Um, but it, obviously this is more of a big picture thing. Obviously the game's not over if you don't pull the goalie. But um, the season's pretty much over if you don't get the two points in a lot of ways. Like, you have to get, you have to maximize it. And, yes, it worked the last time and all that cute stuff. But, unfortunately, this time it did not. Again, I still can't believe it. Jonathan Marshall with 40 calls. What an amazing year. He's been putting the team on his back. Has there have been more injuries this year, unfortunately. Vegas did, you know, bend the rules, so to speak. You know, not bend, but, you know, work around the rules. Work the system a little bit last year having a Mark Stone miraculously be healthy at the right time to get into the postseason. It's just a miracle, I'm telling you. So you can maximize your, your lineup and such into the postseason. Um, yeah, it's frustrating. A lot of people don't like it. But if, if if it's allowed, I guess, I mean, I guess more power to them for, I don't know, working around loopholes, I guess, until maybe it does get addressed in the next uh, CBA and such. Or just off-season stuff, and even it doesn't even have to be a CBA necessarily for that. Um, yeah, what am I even talking about? But yeah, 
Yep. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, pulling the goalie in this situation, people like there was a there was like a there's a couple writers out there like bloggers or whatever you'd call them, saying that John Hines should be fired for what he did. Um, no, John Hines should not be fired for what he did. He pretty much had to. Uh, kind of like you could say, like Derek reminded me, basically, you know, kind of as I was in rube mode, very frustrated with the Gophers' loss to Boston U and the way the way things ended, as it was, you know, they were kind of hanging in there for a while and then just went belly up as the game progressed into the end. And he was saying, well, they were gassed because the t- two top lines were, yeah, and it's like. And he's like, well, Moscow pretty much had to do that. The two top lines were out there the whole time trying to tie the game up. And I got it, and they ran out of gas. It's just, oftentimes I settle down after a game, but it's still, you know, it was irritating and frustrating the way things went, but I'm kind of jumping ahead here. But um, I don't know. Um, I'm not mad at John Heinz for pulling the goalie, bottom line. I'm really not. It, it, kind, of, it kind of is what it is. They kind of had to. Uh, in a lot of ways, because you're, you're, you're how many points behind? Like seven points, eight points, nine points behind to, to just make the playoffs. And, you know, it's April-ish, you know? I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do, that type of thing. You pretty much have to be, you know, you have to maximize every point you can get. And if it doesn't work out, well, it probably wouldn't have anyway. So it's not the end of the world. And if this was, obviously, you would never do this in the postseason. No, <laughs> but just say you don't get a point in the postseason anyway. That's the that's the thing. Whenever I always get annoyed with, yeah, well, at least we got a point, you know, and all that. But then here come the playoffs, and you lose two to one, you know, and, and all that. You still lost the game, and the season might be over. Maybe you just got swept or something. Uh, Vegas pretty much owned us the last. Yeah, they they've been they've definitely for the most part owned the Wild the past few seasons. After the Wild owned them in the really early uh, years of the Vegas franchise, even though they were you know going to the finals and Western Conference finals and all of that. <laughs> or getting upset by the Sharks in the first round the second year. That was pretty crazy. Um, let's move on quickly here. So, sorry, uh, trying to breathe here. So, the Senators game, yeah, this was, what, April the the 2nd. Apparently, Google Podcast ceasing operations. Supposedly, I, it still works for me, though, but I don't know, maybe it won't eventually. <laughs> but I guess everything moved to uh, YouTube Music, so that's something, again, I'm, but then, you know, if you use Google Podcasts, it's going to tell you that anyway. It's like right there. So me telling you is probably like, yeah, Joey, I know the I, I know the stoplight says red, okay? Um, yeah. So anyhow, a 3-2 to two win over the Ottawa Senators. Not the best game I ever saw. It, it really wasn't. And I don't know. Vinny Letary got his fourth goal of the season to be the game winner. That's good for him. Sikorin, I mean, they have some talented players on the club and all of that. And it's nice to see Boldy again have a very strong performance, strong game, strong week overall for Matt Boldy, I think. Uh, 26 goals on the season now. Caprice, 46 assists. Uh, Jacob Schickren, obviously, he's he had that wonderful defenseman that came from the Arizona Coyotes. Everybody was like, oh, you know, it was kind of a sweepstakes going into last season. He's been with Ottawa now. And, I don't know, they have some wonderful players. Like Stutzel, is, I think he's the leading scorer of the entire 2020 draft right now. He's the leading scorer. Um, obviously, that was where uh, Marco Rossi came from. He's certainly doing better than the guy in New York, Rangers, and even uh, Byfield with the uh, LA Kings. So, And we're going to talk about the 2020 draft here in a couple of seconds. A couple of seconds. I got something to say. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, Ottawa has talent and all that, but they're still not winning games. Who knows? Maybe uh, Freddie Goudreau can wind up there next year if um, they hire Dean Evison. Not sure if Dean Evison is the right guy right now, but it, who knows? Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. I, I I don't know. I, I think the Wild are better with John Hines and Dean Everson, and I I hate saying that to Dean because, you know, but I, I don't know. I think I I think John Hines is more innovative than uh, Dean Everson. Dean Everson's kind of like a, this is what we do, where John Hines is like yeah yeah let's try this. You know what I'm saying? Just simple stuff like that. You you're going from this is what we do to yeah let's let's give it a shot. I like the give it a shot attitude a little bit more, especially if it's. A team that's probably not going anywhere anyway. Like, you know, like, come on. Um, Zach Bogosian, arguably the play of the game. What a nice saucer pass to Mason Shaw for his first goal of the season. And that was wonderful. Obviously, a lot of people happy. Mason Shaw, great story. Four ACLs. That's absolutely crazy. I think Cunning, yeah, Luke Cunning had two or three, I believe. He's, he's definitely had a number, but Shaw, four. That's like, wow. Like, what a story. You know, just... 
<laughs> for the love of God, no more. Yep, no more injuries, no more major injuries to Mason Shaw. You know, praying for you, Mason, and uh, good, good for you. Coming from the Everett Silver Tips in the juniors, if I remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, I remember keeping up with him, and it's like he always had good numbers. You, you know, and, and even in, and in Iowa, he was really, you know, he was up there. He'd get the offensive numbers. NHL, obviously, he's bottom six. You know, there's very little chance he's going to be up there in the top six or anything like that. Or even, uh, But at least there's something. At least there's something there, though. He's a, he's, he's a capable offensive player, very gritty and all that, and can be on the penalty kill as well. Um, you're seeing... Who's Nadinov's role grow a little bit? Merit, who's Nadinov getting to be on the uh, penalty kill, which you think he should be, common sense, because of his defensive capabilities and all of that, and winning faceoffs, which is important in any, you know, in any form of the game of hockey, in any situation, winning the faceoff is huge. So we really appreciate what he brings, him being uh, Merit, who's Nadinov, obviously uh, ultra valuable in terms of uh, that. How did he factor versus the uh, Senators anyway? Well, that figures. <laughs> One win, three losses. Oh, <laughs> Senators pretty much dominated the Wild in the faceoff circle, but the Wild still won the game. Good God, they dominated us. Claude Giroux, but of course it's Claude Giroux. 13 wins, two losses. Yeah, I mean, and you look at the talented players on the roster. Ottawa needs to be better. Yeah, Sanderson. Jake Sanderson, too. Sanderson and Shikrin. I almost forgot about Sandy. Old Sandy. No, San Sanderson. Um, and they have Brady to Chuck. Yeah, I don't think he's as good as Matthew, but he's way up there still. Still a good player. I don't know. Ottawa, you know, they, they used to have Mark Stone even long ago in a galaxy far away. 33 goals, 33 assists for 66 points. What is he, a 33rd degree Mason? Sorry, that's creepy. But, uh, yeah, well, that's Brady the Chuck anyway. Nice numbers, but, yeah, not Matt the Chuck level, of course not. Strutzel, Tim Strutzel, very German. Yeah, no doubt. 70 points for Tim Strutzel. That is impressive, man. And he had 90 last year. Remember that? Whew. <laughs> so, yeah, he's, he's he's the leading scorer for 2020. Let's look at 2020. This kind of little wild takes I wanted to get to. Um, then I'll pass out the awards and such. So, Brock Faber. This is just, you know, one of those anomalies. It would have been kind of fun if I brought this up last because I was staring at it at the time. But, you know, you know how you want to, you know, Derek was on Derek was on a thought, and I didn't want to. Bl- I, I didn't want to ruin it for him. And mostly, I, I kind of. It's like I was staring at it, but didn't really get it. I wasn't paying attention. Kind of, I was listening to Derek, you know, that type of thing. But you know how you stare at stuff, and your mind's, you know, you're kind of staring at it blankly. <laughs> so the 2020 draft, right? Brock Faber was taken after Ryan O'Rourke. <laughs> oh yeah, right. It's like, I know, it's the NHL draft and crazy things happen. And, you know, Braden Point, was he, wasn't he taken, was he taken one pick ahead of uh, Louis Belpedio, who's, you know, at best, at best an AHL player, you know, at best. He's not even quad A. He is triple A. That's it. He might even be double or like double, what the hell am I saying? A two and a half uh, A player, <laughs> Louis Belpedio. I don't even want to talk about him right now. Uh, maybe I will look him up in a minute just to torture myself some more. So, yes, Tim Slutzel, he is the leading scorer with 256 points. In fact, he is 46. He is over 100 points ahead of Lafreniere and uh, 80 points ahead of Lucas Raymond, so on and so forth. Brock Faber, yeah, who's Nadinov got his first assist in seven games so far. Ryan O'Rourke was taken behind, uh, was taken after who's Nadinov, yes, but only two picks after Merit who's Nadinov, who is obviously very highly thought of. Uh, some people think he could have, like, you know, Marco Rossi potential, possibly. We'll see. But his, his skating ability is very much there. Brock Faber was taken 45th. Ryan O'Rourke taken 39th. It's just so ironic. Um, Ryan O'Rourke, I think he could make the NHL someday. But, I don't know. Just just think of the contrast here. You know, they're the same age, basically, right? And what's Ryan O'Rourke? He's a minus 29 in Iowa. Minus 29 in Iowa with 12 points. What's Brock Faber in Minnesota? Not Iowa. And obviously Iowa's terrible, and that does hurt your plus minus oftentimes when you're losing games 5-1 to one all the time. Like, all the time. What's Brock Faber? Minnesota's not exactly a great team, but at least we kind of have a winning record and stuff. Uh, let's see, 41 points, not not 12. <laughs> 41 points, or does he have 12 points? And uh, that's Aurora. 12, yeah, 12 points and minus 29. Um, Brock Faber, 41 points in 74 games, which is a little bit more. And he's a plus five on a mediocre wild team. I mean, 
Unbelievable. Isn't that just crazy how things can go? The Wild could have taken Brock Faber anyway. Maybe we could have taken another. We could have plucked another prospect off of L.A. in the, uh, <laughs> in the, um, uh, bra- uh, what's his name? Kevin Fiala trade. Sorry, I, I need a, <laughs> that's where sometimes it would be nice to have somebody in my ear, you know, <laughs> something like that, you know, like say like a headphone set, which if I'm by myself, I'm not going to wear headphones. There's no reason. There's no purpose unless I want to listen back to something as I'm recording, which would be kind of weird. That'd be weird. I'd just be distracted, you know. Um, yeah, Brodine's a plus 21. That's a nice number, obviously. Great number. But it's just crazy when you look at the contrast of things and how things can go in the uh, NHL draft. And Ryan O'Rourke may go on to be a solid third-pair defenseman. That's about what I see out of Ryan O'Rourke. I don't know if he's going to be beyond that. Uh, Brock Faber, we were hoping he'd be a top-four guy. Well, I think... I, I, I think that's uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, assumption. <laughs> Top four would be disappointing at this at this stage. Is how good as Brock Faber's been. A lot of people would agree that he should get the Calder Trophy, not the Calder Cup, but the Calder Trophy. Uh, Calder Cup, obviously, that's for the AHL, I believe. Yeah, that'd be great, right? <laughs> Sorry, um, it's just crazy. Thought I'd bring that up. Obviously, yeah, I know. It's just I know because some of you probably stare at that all the time and are like, yeah, it's funny. Uh, the Dallas Stars, I think they're the. I think they might win the Stanley Cup this year, and I hate saying that. Do you think I like the Dallas Stars? No, <clears throat> but I think they're right now. If 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 I'm a betting man, like say with you know DraftKings and such, going into the postseason, I I think I'm going to Dallas, and I don't want to. I don't like Dallas. Are you kidding me? But I think they. they I, I think this might be their year. Like they're that good. Um, obviously, things can change dramatically once you get into the postseason. But they look, they look lethal. Colorado, obviously, you could pick them any year. But I think Dallas is hungrier. There's players up and down that roster that have never won a cup, young and old, that are hungry. Kind of like Colorado was a couple years ago uh, when they just kind of, you know, kicked everyone's ass and won the Stanley Cup. Um, that's, to me, that's the Dallas Stars right now. They look great. Uh, they're the second favorite in the Western Conference to win the cup. Edmonton has dropped a bit, and they got their asses handed to them by the Dallas Stars last night. Let me tell you, what was it, five to one or something? It was bad. It was it was bad. Uh, Dallas just killed them. And again, I didn't enjoy it. I'd rather see Edmonton win. Oh, I don't want a Canadian team to win. Why? I'd be totally fine with the Canadian team winning a Stanley Cup again, even if it's the Canadians. Yeah, which have like way too many Stanley Cups, but. <laughs> it is ironic that they are the last team to win the Stanley Cup from Canada, and they're the last team to go to the final also, which it was in that weird bubble year. How the heck did that team get to the Cup final? That was, like, weird. <laughs> It'd be like, you know, like if they could make it, the Wild could have made it from that side of the of the NHL. <laughs> like, they could have. They could have, <laughs> instead of losing in the first round. Uh, Carolina is, I guess, the favorite in the Eastern Conference to win the Cup, even though the Rangers have the most points. New York Rangers, of course, but Carolina's got the best odds, so to speak, um, at plus 650. Crazy. Pittsburgh is still in the running? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> they're, they're, they're okay. <laughs> I'm so mean, right? Uh, yeah, Florida. Florida, imagine a Dallas and Florida Cup final. Oof, go Florida, let me tell you. Go Florida. But maybe, maybe. Wouldn't be surprised. Or Dallas-Boston, the, the Andy Moog Cup final, you could say. <laughs> you could you could, you could say that uh, Rangers and Stars. Who knows? That'd be the that'd be the uh, Dave Gagne Cup final. <laughs> Carolina. That'd be the Pat Verbeek final. Yep. I know. I'm just getting weird here. I apologize. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry. I'm just having a little fun here. I guess in a way. Pat Verbeek. Remember that guy? Hell of a player, wasn't he? I love Pat Verbeek. Hmm especially with the Hartford Whalers. That's why I said, you know, because Dallas and, you know, the Whalers, which are now Carolina. Anyhow, um, <coughs> Mike Madonna Award winner for this week. Um, uh, e, uh, ooh, uh. It could be Gustafson. It could be Boldy. I'm just going to go with Boldy. It's the March of Boldy. You know, he's had a nice, a nice week or so. And I don't know. I, I thought he played pretty well this week. He's not perfect. Obviously, nobody's perfect. But strong week by Matt Boldy. The uh, James Shepard Memorial Popcorn Maker is the guy that's making popcorn right now because he's on a suspension. I'm tired of Ryan Hartman. <laughs> I'm tired of Ryan Hartman. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done, but guess what? The, the, the Wild won't be. 
Oh, he's a valuable player. He, you know, what, what are you talking about? He gives it everything. He wants to be here, too. I know. I'm done with Ryan Hartman. You can say that till the, you're blue in the, you can say that till you're blue in the face. You can say he didn't deserve the suspension. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you keep doing stuff. You just keep doing stuff like dumb things like this. I, I, uh, you know, he's, he's an okay player. He's solid. But, I mean, for me, he, he obviously doesn't move the, he doesn't push the envelope for me at all. I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm over Ryan Hartman if it's up to me, but I guess it's not up to me and we're stuck. So, that's just terrific. It's just absolutely wonderful. With that, we'll take a quick break, come back for uh, very brief previews. I better get moving. Wild, segment number two, and we're going to jump right straight into DraftKings right here and right now. We know hockey games move fast, but with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, you can score faster than anything happening on the ice. This week, new customers can bet five bucks and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Ask for games tonight on the money line. Carolina Hurricanes hosting the Boston Bruins. Wow, epic. Uh, Boston Bruins on the road, plus 130. Carolina at home, minus 155. Tampa Bay Lightning hosting the Montreal Canadiens. That was the last time the Canadiens went to the Cup Finals. <laughs> Canadiens, the hosts, plus 136. Tampa on the road, minus 162. Florida and Ottawa, the, I don't know, is it the the, the Chuck? Yeah, it is. It is the, 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 the Chuck Cup Final. Ottawa's the host, one th- uh, plus 130 for Ottawa, minus 155 for the visiting Florida Panthers, Florida. Tonight's Wild game, hosting the Colorado Avalanche. The Wild are a plus 136, the visiting Avalanche a minus 162. Playoff implications here, National Predators hosting the St. Louis Blues. I think there's a pretty good chance who's uh, favored here. National Predators, minus 198 versus the uh, visiting St. Louis Blues, plus 164. Kings and Sharks, I don't know, just for bleeps and giggles, the Sharks are a plus 250 despite the fact they're at home, and the visiting Kings, minus 310. Ooh! Okay, we'll do this one too, a, ca- a Canadian game overall. Uh, um, Winnipeg Jets, the hosting Winnipeg Jets, minus 205. The visiting Calgary Flames, plus 170. Again, that is the money line. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app with code THPN. New customers bet just 5 bucks on the NHL and get 200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code THPN. That is the Hockey Podcast Network. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? <clears throat> Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY at 467-369. And connect the cut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777. I always get a kick out of those numbers. Or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See code dkng.com. Slash hockey for eligibility and deposit restrictions, uh, terms, and responsible gambling resources. NHL and the NHL Shield are registered trademarks of the National Hockey League. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. So, let's get going into the previews and very briefly. i got to stop being long-winded, especially on this episode, because there's going to be a number of, uh, you know, there's going to be a big number of fan interaction coming up. And I've got a little bit to say about the stupid uh, Gophers, I guess, in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, the stupid Gophers. Isn't that nice to say? Well, they pissed me off, dang it. Colorado Avalanche, oh goody. Uh, we're not going to beat the Avalanche, are we? Well, we might just because we're, just to, just to be, just to have some fun, I guess. This is an XL Energy Center, of course. 
Injuries. Oh, fun. Uh, Nishushkin uh, did not play on April 1st versus Columbus. Okay, Logan O'Connor. He's been out since, uh, yep, he's just put on injured reserve since March 25th. Uh, he was uh, hasn't played since March uh, 6th. And Frank Cruz is out for the year, apparently. Whoa, 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 what am I looking at here? Time out. Frank Cruz will return to the Czech Republic for the rest of the season. Okay, got it. Marcus Foligno is out for the season now, season-ending surgery. So um, it's nothing like super bad. It's just he's, yeah, it, it is what it is. They're just going to move on, you know. Obviously, it's been a nagging problem with uh, Marcus Foligno for an extended period. Sam Henches has been out forever, of course. And Spurgeon's out for the year. And he's out, and he's out, and he's out, and he's out. Colorado's got the number one offense in the National Hockey League, 278 goals. The Wild are 21st. Goals against the Wild are 17th. Avalanche, 13th. Assists, which isn't something I always bring up, but it's Colorado. They're number one in the league. Minnesota's 19th. Power play, Colorado, 6th. Minnesota, 16th. Penalty kill, Colorado, 6th. What's up with these sixes? Uh, Minnesota, 29th. Okay. Hey, we're out of the we're out of the doldrums of penalty kill, but it still sucks. 29th. So we're still giving up, what, almost 27%. Of it. That's awful. <laughs> Freaking awful. Anyhow, penalty minutes, Colorado's 15th, Minnesota's 30th, and so on and so forth. The Wild are trailing the series two games to zero. We're playing the Avalanche twice. Colorado get the brooms out, probably. That's my guess, even though they haven't been so hot of late. But, I don't know, even good teams take a crap sometimes late in the year. Remember the Wild were awful the last week or so in uh, 2 3 before we went on the miraculous playoff run. Like, nobody saw that happening. I think 90% of the population said Colorado in five over the Minnesota Wild. And it almost was Colorado in five. They took a three games to one lead, and then the Wild hung on and hung on and hung on and squeezed past Colorado in game five. And then you had the famous Richard Parkle, which I stupidly for, <laughs> stupidly forgot about when I was ta- when uh, we were talking about the five greatest moments in Wild history and such. That was a great moment when Richard Park scored that goal and all the momentum was on Minnesota's side. Anyhow, let's get off of that for a moment. But th- we've had a lot of history against this team. You know, it's one of the few teams that stayed in the same division with us uh, when the uh, realignment took place uh, over a decade ago now. The teams like Winnipeg came in the league leaving Atlanta. <coughs> Colorado, again. But it's because they've not been as good. Uh, what did they, well, yeah, they basically got half of the points they could have gotten in the last week because they have a shootout loss versus the Rangers. Again, that could be a cup final type of thing. Whew, that could be big time. Could be. Rangers are the best, actually have the most points right now. They're leading the way for the President's Trophy. Crazy. I don't think they win the cup, but uh, maybe they do. Colorado's two, well, they're basically two, two, and one this past week. Minnesota, Three and two, or two and three, excuse me. Let's keep going. Um, I think the Avalanche are going to beat the Minnesota Wild, unfortunately. Final score in Excel Energy Center, four to two. Avalanche win. The most likely guy to score tonight will be Matt, Matt Boldy's going to keep it up, I think. Why, why the heck not? Why not have a little positive vibe for Matt Boldy going forward? Man, the wrong month. Isn't that great? Well, it was the March of Boldy. But then the Wild will play the Winnipeg Jets, uh, then visit Chicago and visit Colorado coming up, so we get to play Colorado twice, which is always fun. Winnipeg Jets are what they are. They're, uh, well, boy, I almost messed this up. That sucks. <laughs> I almost messed this up royally. Winnipeg Jets, um, uh, well, they're obviously a playoff team. They've been a tough matchup this year. This could be an ugly, uh, very ugly week, actually, for the Wild. Why did I do that? Jiminy Christmas. I <laughs> screwed this whole thing up. Wow, why did I do that? Oh, man. I apologize. Pressing the wrong buttons here, and it's screwing it all up. Okay. My apologies. This, of course, is in X Energy Center again. Nino Niederreiter, who was the hero versus the Avalanche the second time around, uh, all those years later, in 2014. That was fun, and we had a young core. We thought we were on to something, and we weren't. Damn it. Uh, Winnipeg's number one in the league in goals against, 17th in goals for. They're 23rd in the power play, 24th in the penalty kill, so their special teams are kind of crappy, but they score a lot of goals. Not points, but... Or they, they prevent a lot of goals, pardon me. They're great in the net. They're, they don't score that many. Lower scoring, kind of gritty type of style, and they're sweeping the wild on the course of the season, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Maybe Minnesota squeezes out this one, maybe. Maybe just because it's just we like to be a, like, like an annoyance to Winnipeg, but they have kicked our butts for the most part this year. 
Uh, don't think we've even gotten a point versus them. There's no shootout loss or anything or overtime. Winnipeg four to two on December twenty thirtieth, uh, and then December thirty first, of course, we lost on New Year's Eve, three to two, six to three demolition at Winnipeg on Feb twentieth. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is another loss. But Winnipeg has been stuck, and they had lost four in a row <clears throat> until they beat the LA Kings. So another good team was kind of falling off the map and uh, watching the Stars kind of blow by everybody, which is happening right now, and Colorado, but the Stars especially. <clears throat> the Stars are uh, shining. Pardon me. <clears throat> I don't know. I think there's a good chance the Wild go 500 this week, even though you think they shouldn't because these teams are t- tough for the most part. I don't think Colorado's going to... I don't know. I mean, there's a good chance the Wild go 1-3 and three this week. And it's kind of like, oh, well, what the hell? <sighs> yeah, okay, we'll lose to Winnipeg. We'll lose to Winnipeg. Another, uh, this one will be kind of tighter, 3-2 to two type of game. The Wild have been uh, better defensively, generally speaking. The goaltending's been better as well. 3-2 to two loss, Kaprizov, inching close to 40 goals on the season. He will get 40-plus on the year. But the Wild um, lose to the uh, Winnipeg Jets. Maybe we squeeze out a point, but no. Even if we we probably pull the goalie <laughs> in a situation like that, but we're we're going to be eliminated anyway in the next few minutes. It seems like because it's it's getting close. But uh, Kaprizov will inch closer to his 40th goal of the year. Chicago Blackhawks, how exciting! I don't know what I'm doing here, losing my mind. Yep, because I didn't set this up the way I should have. But uh, I don't know. That's how I roll. Blackhawks 31st in goals. Isn't that great? 31st in goals, 28th in goals against. 28th in the power play, 22nd in the penalty kill, 13th in penalty minutes, and they have the worst shooting percentage in the NHL. Okay. Well, <laughs> but, Connor DeVar- but Connor Bedard, though. But Connor Bedard, though. Come on. Yeah, Connor Bedard, though. Uh, 21 goals, 31, 37 assists. Part of me, 58 total points. He missed extended time. He's a minus 38. Brock Faber should get it, but I don't know. It's Connor Bedard, though. But it's Connor Bedard. Okay, I know. You get the point. Injuries. Zets, uh, uh, Nikita Zetsev, upper body. Oh, brother, I can hear a train coming. Oh, man. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Colin Blackwell uh, did not play, so it's kind of like an up and down type of thing. Same thing with uh, Reese Johnson. Reese Johnson. That's, yeah, brrr, that didn't sound good. I guess that's the Felino train right now. What's up with that horn? Yeah, that's the Wilds train trying to make the playoffs. Uh, what the? <laughs> okay, sure. Okay, good. At least it wasn't, yeah. Like, that person knows, like, just leave, leave off the horn, okay? It's, it's, it's pathetic sounding. It probably needs to be replaced. <laughs> kind of like certain veterans on the team. Kind of. Next, Chicago Blackhawks. They are three and two in their last five. I can't believe it. That's funny. But they did play the Sharks and the they beat Calgary. Is not good either. They beat Philadelphia five to one in Philly. That might be their best win of the year. Eighth place in the Central. The Wild are sixth. Ah, oh, go away, Marcus. You're too loud. Come on, man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Marcus Plato train. Uh, the Wild win the Bla- the Wild win the game versus the Blackhawks comfortably four to one. Over the Chicago Blackhawks, the Wild will win comfortably. Multiple goals for multiple goals for Matt Boldy. Multiple goals for Matt Boldy in this one. And Kaprizov at this point will have reached his 40th goal of the season. Maybe he's the one with multiple goals in the game. But I don't know. I've been kind of on the Boldy train here of late. I wouldn't be surprised if Faber and each, uh, gets close to 50 points by the end of the well, the end of the season. I, I hope he can get there, and maybe that could help him clinch the Rookie of the Year. Despite the fact Connor Bedard is, you know, obviously he's a phenom and he is what he is. So the Wild, though, beat the Blackhawks comfortably, four to one, and we get to play the the uh, Colorado Avalanche again. Oh goody! Which reeks of a sweep. I think the Avalanche get the brooms out, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit. The Avalanche win the game <clears throat> in Colorado, five to two, five to two. Yeah, it's going to be one of those. Avalanche went comfortably five to two over the Minnesota Wild. It ain't going to be two to one like the the recent one with uh, you know Brandon Duhame's uh, game versus Minnesota, uh, versus Minnesota. His first game with the Avalanche with my nephews and my brother's father-in-law in attendance. That'd be David Kostick, of course, coming out of Minnesota Wild Global. That's right. Uh, my nephews Max and Alex, of course, were with him in Colorado. Awesome, awesome scenery there, of course. 
as they weren't just sitting in the city the whole time waiting for the game. They went a little sightseeing as well. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty fun. Obviously, they were there for a few days also. But um, I think a few days before, and then came the game, and then eventually they came back. So, fun, fun stuff. So, a little side conversation, but the Avalanche went 5-2. to two, And Brock Faber will score his at least his eighth goal of the season versus the Colorado Avalanche, but in a losing effort, unfortunately, as the Wild will go 1-3 and three this week. With that, we're going to look at the prospects and talk about the tournament right now prospects and the Iowa Wild and all that cute stuff. Um, Liam Ulgren, who had 19 points in Sweden this past year, <clears throat> obviously missed a significant amount of time with a shoulder injury, but uh, looked good in the postseason in the past. Historically, he's had some good moments and such, but he is with the Iowa Wild right now. I believe it's a loan. I don't think he's officially going to be staying here in the U.S. at the moment, but maybe. I, I don't think so, if I remember correctly. His overall uh, status situation. I guess they did sign the entry level, uh, yeah, back a, back a year ago, believe it or not. That was like a, the entry level and all that to kind of have him on board. Yep, over a four, over four million dollars. And yes, that officially is going to start in twenty four twenty five. He will be in the USA uh, next season. So obviously, kind of digging around. <laughs> That's what I thought. I mean, I just wanted to make absolute sure. Yep, hockey news here. So wanted to make absolutely sure setting hockey news and such. So. Um, oh, the, oh, this is Yard Barker, actually. Um, yeah, in, in all likelihood, the Stockholm native has played his last game in Sweden. He'll likely start next season with Iowa. Yep, that's what I thought. To become more acclimated to the North America game, especially after missing such a large chunk of 23-24. But he is a sh- uh, sure bet to at least see a handful of NHL contests. So, very exciting. Um, he's unlikely to see any postseason action with Iowa to close out the year as they're, as they're seven points out of a playoff spot in the AHL's uh, Central Division with eight games remaining. His ELC will expire in 2027, so that's good. Um, so, we're yeah, we're not actually burning a year. It was because uh, he was on loan the past two years. He did sign the entry-level contract pretty much right away after being drafted. I was thinking, yeah, it was right away. It was the summer of 22 there in July. Um, I remember that now. It's like I was blanking out a little bit, obviously, but <laughs> sometimes it's like got my eyes on year off so much and then keeping up with the uh, NHL and uh, current AHL guys, but Obviously, yeah, it's like, obviously it's been an ongoing uh, conversation all year that Ogren will be in North America, Iowa, or Minnesota next year, and that is the beginning of his ELC, 24-25. So, pretty cool. Good to know that, uh, yep, he's done now with Sweden. And to Minnesota slash Iowa, well, Iowa slash Minnesota he goes. So, at least he gets to play with Iowa. Unfortunately, no games yet because they... They have kind of a hockey, uh, they have a college hockey kind of schedule. It's easier for traveling and such with buses and such. And, you know, it's it's a college hockey type schedule pretty much in uh, in the AHL. Not always, but a lot of times. So, Liam Olgren, welcome to uh, North America, buddy. Great to have you. Great to have you. Buddy, right? Like, like I know him real well. <laughs> It'd be nice, I guess. He'd be a lot younger. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep moving before I choke to death. I don't know what's wrong with me. Can't even do a show without, like, coughing these days. It's stupid. Uh, you're off and all that. Yep, you're off. His contract situation still up in the air, and that's unfortunate. Obviously, again, what a, you know, wonderful PC he's going to be. Uh, in 13 playoff games so far with, uh, yeah, 13 playoff games with Metalurg, only five points. Hopefully that's going to change a little bit. Obviously, he's a young guy. Uh, last year in 11 playoff games, no points. The year before in the 19 playoff games, no points. What the hell? So his his playoff numbers need to improve. Hmm. Was Dean Evans in his coach? I don't know. I'm just kidding. That's mean, isn't it? 19 playoff games, no points. But then again, I bet he wasn't put in any situation to do anything, especially two years ago. It's like a little baby. So it's like putting a baby to fight against Hulk Hogan. Uh, you know, to to wrestle with Hulk Hogan, like good good luck. You know, I mean, <laughs> an 18 year old in the KHL in the postseason, sure, easy stuff. It's easy. Like, come on, come on, don't be a wimp. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, Jack Pert at first, according to Derek, and uh, yeah, uh, looked yeah he looked pretty average at times, but then showed some signs as as the game progressed, showed some moments. But Jack Pert. First game with Iowa. You know, obviously, it's just his first game there, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Donning the number three with the Iowa Wild. One game so far, and that's it. No numbers of any kind to talk about. 5'11", 186, 
Grand Rapids, Minnesota, and Mr. Hockey Award winner, recipient, and all that cute stuff. But another defenseman to join that. I, I won't call it a cesspool because it's not. It's just the numbers are a cesspool, though. Minus 29, this guy. Lambeau says minus 15. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot of nice, promising defensemen that... I don't know, haven't been playing real well in Iowa because they're all kind of super young at the same time. It's just, I don't know, it's a bad combination of a lot of things. Even though you think, man, that's exciting, get all these prospects, and I don't know, instead it's having a negative effect at the moment. Uh, Damon Hunt, this is my take on Damon Hunt. Well, now 44 games, 25 points. He's been factoring offensively, and he is a zero. He is even on that team. When you have a, you know, a prospect, you know, who is pretty highly thought of for the most part, with a minus 29. And I know I'm harping on you, Ryan, Ryan O'Rourke. One in a million chance he's listening, but sorry to sound like I'm beating him up because I'm not meaning to. But the fact that uh, a, a guy at the same age is a minus 29, same position, blah, 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 same age. You know, they're both fairly high draft picks in 2020. Diamond Hunt's zero. He's, he's even. That's a pretty big difference. And 25 points to boot. Uh, Damon Hunt needs to be in the National Hockey League all year next year. All year. Just like Marco Rossi. Uh, I'm guessing he's going to work his ass off. And I believe that uh, he's a character player. He's been a captain and such. Um, obviously, Marco Rossi, that's what was really his, uh, <clears throat> that's really what a lot of us were standing on when it came to Marco Rossi, that he would make it because of his work ethic and his desire. Uh, it, it's, it's just, you know, it's embedded in him. And Damon Hunt, I can imagine the same. Uh, it's not like he was super disappointing up here in Minnesota. I thought he was an equal for the most part. He was at least a third pair defenseman in the NHL when he was in Minnesota. He wasn't like, oh my God, what the hell? This guy's not even close. Oh yeah, he's, he's close all right. Uh, and I think he's a full-time NHLer next year. No press box, none of that bull crap. No popcorn making, none of that. Uh, Damon Hunt needs to be a, uh, a, you know, one of the six defensemen on the ice all season provided he's healthy. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, you could probably hear it probably louder than I can hear it. <laughs> microphone picks up some crazy stuff sometimes. You know, like, like ow, I got barely whispering, ow, and it's like, here I could hear it so easy. My ankle, because <laughs> I was getting curled up here on the table, and uh, it is what it is. Sammy Walker, 39 points on the season. Flogerty, nice veteran, who's uh, been a good example setter for the most part, but he is in my ass 16, so... Uh, Michael Milne, again, another guy, a great skater, and he's he's even as well. So he might be a bottom six NHL prospect type of guy. He might be a Mason Shaw type with better skating ability. He's only 20 years of age. So he pretty much came to Iowa right away. Uh, he pretty much did. It was like right away because he was a slightly older prospect. Um, Derek pretty much went over every player in Iowa, which is totally cool. You know, everybody from the older guys to the younger guys. Um, Elson's been a nice, nice fit early on. He's been a wonderful fit. He's got seven points. Uh, Toporowski is a wonderful story coming to Iowa. Still 22 years of age, and he's got six points in 10 games. So I'm happy for him. You know, coming to my, he's from Iowa and coming to Iowa. So pretty cool. Nice to have literally Iowa players in the NHL. Like you think of Iowa as like offensive linemen, maybe, maybe running backs, but you think football for the most part with Iowa. Maybe some basketball players too. Maybe a certain female that I... I don't know. I think it's, <laughs> I think it's a little too much attention these days, but good for her. You know, I'll just leave it at that. A little too much sometimes. Okay, we get it. You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, I probably offended everybody listening. Some, you know what I mean? Some, some people get covered uh, to a point of nauseam. That's just how I see things. I don't like anything over covered. I don't care if it's my favorite player in the world, you know, if I, I, I'd feel guilty. Like, okay, okay, okay. Calm down a little bit. Calm down. Yeah, yeah, she's good, or he's good, or whoever's good. Calm down. That kind of thing. <laughs> um, so on, so forth. Yeah, Iowa, well, I mean, at least they're scoring goals a little bit lately, and I think they, yeah, they won their last game, which feels like a week ago, because it pretty much was. Jesper Volstead or Volstead, 2.65, way better than before, and he's got a winning record, and this team is pretty impressive. 21 and 18 on the year, save percentage of 91 again. After that awful, uh, st after that awful few games, um, getting crushed by the Dallas Stars of all teams, maybe the future Cup champs. Um, yeah, it's it'd, it'd be like again, like a baby going out and facing Hulk Hogan. You know, it's like oh crap. Maybe like this young pitching prospect, and you're going up against the New York Yankees in '98. Oh goody, boom, <laughs> adios. 
It's seven nothing in the first inning, and they're pulling him already. Uh, imagine that. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what it was like. And obviously the play in front didn't help Jesper Volstead at all. At all. Um, it's not because the pitcher would have been bad or, or the the goalie. It's just the situation. It was the worst. It was like a perfect storm. <laughs> I mean, the sky was dark green. There, there was baseball-sized hail coming down and, a, and, a, and an EF4 tornado. Maybe EF5, but they're so rare. I'll say EF4 tornado included. That's pretty much what that was. Let's go. Sorry, I'm babbling. Iowa is what they are. <sighs> I'm babbling again. I need to get to fan interaction, like, immediately. At least I started this one a little earlier again. Yeah, thank you, Derek, obviously. <laughs> Last week, getting me going a little earlier. That could have really been bad. Uh, what am I staring at? Guys like Hunter Haight, Gregor Lawrence, Denver, they're still in the mix. Yep. Well, yeah, why am I looking at his numbers? But he did take a nice step forward, Hunter Haight. Uh, yep, he's 20 years of age. He'll be with Iowa next year. He took a step up this year for the most part. Uh, the math kind of has him almost even to last year, but he was a plus 14 versus a plus 6 over the course of time, and he's in the postseason at the moment. Three goals in, or three points in four games, so at least he's productive in the postseason for Hunter Hate. I'm not hating on him. Yeah, that was cute. Ryan Healy, of course, did not make the postseason, but good strong step forward for the defense in, out of Harvard. Uh, Petrovsky, yeah, I guess we're moving on from Petrovsky, which is, seems a little hasty, but that sucks. I'm sorry, Servak. I am. Jimmy Clark and the Gophers, they're out, but uh, he was a factor in the Omaha game. In the wild, the Gophers almost lost that one. Freaking idiots. Okay, sorry. They did, though. They almost lost to Omaha, and that would have really had people on Moscow's, you know, case, to lack of better words. I don't know, man. I don't know. Next, uh, Kalen Parker, yeah, 43, 42 points for Moose Jaw this past year. That's in the WHL. Not the Women's Hockey League, but the Western Hockey League. <laughs> Plus 21. I know, I'm just silly. Because WNBA, uh, I'm in a weird mood all the time. Pionk with Duluth, they're of course out. He had 20 points over the course of the year. Riley Height, again, 117 points, and he's got... Seven assists in four games, no goals in the postseason. But, uh, all right, Riley, bring some of that playoff uh, excellence to Minnesota when the time comes. Some people do believe Riley Height will skate with Minnesota next year because it's either Minnesota or Prince George. Ah, that's the thing. When you have a guy who's dominating to that level, you hate that 20, 20 years, you know, you have to be 20 years old type of thing, but it is what it is. And he just turned 19, so he won't turn 20 until, uh, you know, March 25th. So, yeah, well, I guess we're in no huge rush. He's slightly younger than my nephews. Wow. Isn't that something? Time flies. Kumpelainen, Rasmus Kumpelainen with 56 points in 58 regular season games. One goal in three playoff games so far. All right. And Charlie Stramel, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin, they're out. And he's out as well. He's leaving uh, Wisconsin. He's uh, on his way to, who knows, maybe the Gobers could use him. Uh, if, I don't know, um, but hasn't been, uh, Hastings hasn't been all too popular, but in college, hasn't been all too popular with NHL, uh, you know, executives, but college hockey is a different game, you know, necessarily. It's not necessarily always going to be the place to go for elite prospects. Like elite prospects should either go to the juniors or whatever. It's, I don't know, but college hockey is stronger than most juniors. Like, I don't know if Riley Hay would get 117 points if he was on the Gophers. Like, that'd be pretty incredible. Incredible. Plus, it's less games, though, too. Sometimes that's a good thing that they're in juniors because they play more games, but the competition level is often less. Let's look at the tourney really, really, really quick. I try not to babble my head off here. Oh, boy. So, yep, Boston College wins comfortably over Michigan Tech, and they defeat the national champion Quinnipiac, uh, whoever they are. Yeah, whatever they are, the Cats. They beat them. Yep, so Winnipeg will not defend their national championship after beating the Govers last year, much to my chagrin. Both the Govers and Quinnipiac eliminated in the Elite Eight, if we can call it that. Quinnipiac did knock out Charlie Stramel's Wisconsin Badgers in the first round, so they did advance. I did pick Quinnipiac to win that game, if I remember correctly, but uh, ultimately losing to Boston College, who is in the Frozen Four in St. Paul, where they can make fun of Joe Mawa and tell him he, needs, he drinks wine coolers. Supposedly, that's what Red Sox fans did once. I, I don't I don't get it, but <laughs> other than wine coolers make you a wimp, I guess. I don't know. Michigan State, they defeated Western Michigan, so the Michigan bracket was 
Michigan. And I was playing around being a dork last week saying North Dakota. And then uh, Derek went the correct route and picked Michigan. The last, I mean, it's not like Western Michigan was going to win, but then again, who knows? They almost beat Michigan State. Impressive. But then the Wolverines did what they usually do when they play against Michigan State in other sports. Not always, though. Not always. What am I saying? But um, I don't know. I like the Wolverines more than the Spartans most of the time. And uh, congratulations, Michigan Wolverines. They're in the Frozen Four playing against Boston College. Denver Pioneers. Yeah, again, for the 950th time, they're going to the Frozen Four. They knocked out the UMass Lowell, I believe. No, they're not Lowell, just regular UMass, which used to have, uh, what are they called? They used to have Lindbergh, our, our goalie prospect, and they won the national championship of all things. It was amazing to see our goalie do that, and then he left Minnesota. <laughs> he left He left right away after that to go to Pittsburgh in a trade. Or no, free agency, sorry. 2-1 to one over UMass, and then Cornell beat Maine, so my national champion pick lost right away to Cornell, Big Red. If they're fresh and breath longer, nothing freshens breath longer than Cornell College, I guess, with a 3-1 to one win over the Maine Black Bears. But then Denver beat the Cornell Big Red by a very narrow margin, 2-1, to one. Would be nice to see Cornell instead. I'm sick of Denver. I am sick of Denver, man. I'm sick of Boston College and Boston U, too, for the most part, but I don't know. If it was North Dakota or Denver, I'm going to go with Boston every freaking time. Dead serious. North Dakota and Denver, I'm sick of them. Sorry. I just, I'm sick of them. Uh, Michigan does have a bajillion titles, but a lot of them were a long, 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 like about 70 years ago. And I'm not trying to be showing off and stuff. They were about 70 years ago, back in the 50s. Um, what was another team that won a, I think Boston College won, a, their first national championship was 1949, or is that Boston U? Now I'm getting them mixed up. But both of them have six national, no, they have five, they're just like the Gophers. Uh, I'm going to look it up real fast. You know, it's in University Hockey, yeah, because you can Wikipedia, it's super quick, and it's cool to look at. I love looking at Wikipedia for college hockey teams, because everything's right there. They have five. Okay, yeah, they uh, they won their first. They were a nemesis for the Gophers because I always get them mixed up. Boston U was the nemesis for the Gophers a lot of times. 1971, 1972, 1978. That's when the Gophers were dominant. They actually beat the Gophers in the national championship in 71. And then they won in 95. I think they knocked the Gophers out in 95 when we got to the Frozen Four, or Final Four still. And then 2009, and they did lose to Providence recently where the goalie dropped the puck into the net. The poor guy. He didn't realize the puck was there. It stuck in his hand. He was kind of moving around, and the puck went in the net, and he was, oh, he was so heartbroken, and they ended up losing the game to Providence. So that was really sad. Um, I felt bad for that kid, man. Five national championships, just like the Gophers. So they're trying to get there before us to their sixth title. Boston University, now we'll go to Boston College. Ay, ay, ay. What a dummy. I'm sorry. I'm bumping stuff here. Boston College Eagles. The Eagles versus the, well, we'll see if it's a national championship game. It could be. Uh, they recently won in 2012. Yep, their first national title was way back in 1949, and then they didn't win again until uh, 2001. So, yeah, that's a big drought. <laughs> Crazy. 2001, 2008, 2010, and 2012. Um, I forget which one knocked the Gophers out in the Frozen Four in 2012, because I know we made it, but we lost. I think it was Boston College. Because, yeah, I mean, it's, we're always losing to the Boston College and Boston U, so it is what it is. It sucks, but what are you going to do with the Terriers and the Eagles? The terrible Terriers. Is that going to be the national championship game? Obviously, again, I could even pick this next week, but eh, I could pick it now, too, and maybe I'll just kind of reemphasize it. I won't go over things as much as I did this week that way. Boston College versus Michigan. Should I join Derek in the uh, upset? Somehow I got a feeling it is going to be Boston and Boston. Boston and Boston. Boston and Boston. But yeah, I didn't even go over our, our uh, thing here first. Uh, Boston University wins comfortably over RIT, 6-3. to three. They kind of took the lead and kind of pulled away. The Gophers were losing to Omaha and had to make a furious rally and come back and win. God. <laughs> and then we go up 2 nothing versus Boston U. Everything looks good. And then, oh, you know, we start making some mistakes. Boston U scores to make it 2-1. to one. And then next thing you know, it's a tie game. And it's like, what the bleep? And then the Gophers are trailing. 3-2. to two. Uh, three to 3-2. Then you tie it up. You feel, okay, okay. Yeah, Derek said we were kind of texting back and forth 
um, that uh, the next goal is going to be huge. Obviously, if it's 4-2, to two, Boston's going to win. 3-3, three to three, the Gophers still have a shot. And it was 3-3. Three to three. And then Boston, you scored again. And then eventually, you know, it was like fighting, fighting, fighting. The Gophers just couldn't finish, couldn't finish, couldn't finish, couldn't finish. And then, you know, as we were, you know, the whole third period, obviously, again, just the same two lines, like, constantly. And they got gassed with the empty net situation. And it was it. <laughs> so Boston U goes to the Frozen Four in St. Paul. Of course, the Gophers don't make it. And nobody else from Minnesota is there either. No Duluth, no blah, blah, blah. Denver versus Boston U, that's pretty historic stuff. And honestly, Michigan versus Boston College is historic stuff. But you know who has the best player and looks better than anybody else? Boston University. Boston University beats Denver and will skate against Boston College for the national championship. It'll be number one versus number two in the whole country. This might be a BS take, but I, that's what I think is going to happen. I think it is going to be number one versus number two. Um, I'll be rooting for Michigan and I'll be rooting for Boston U, even though they just beat us. Because I don't like Denver, damn it. I'm sick of them. <laughs> Denver's got nine, nine national championships. Michigan's got eight, but again, a ton of them were in the past. So I'd be totally fine with Michigan winning the national title because most of them were, you know, long ago, and they haven't won a single national title in the 21st century. Their last was 1998 when I graduated from high school. I kind of vaguely remember that. The Gophers were shitty. Okay, yeah, I can swear. Once in a blow moon. They were shitty about back then, just like they were about 10 years later, 2007, 2008, 2009. The Gophers sucked. And yep, that was the end of the Woog era around that time. It just wasn't going to work out anymore. I kind of, I kind of see Moscow as a as a Woog type as well. A lot of people love and respect Doug Woog because he made the Gophers very competitive. They got to multiple Final Fours and they were in the tournament and all that, but they never won it. They just never won it. And I'm kind of seeing Bob Moscow kind of the same. Gets us there, gets us to the tournament, even might even get us to the Frozen Four sometimes, which wasn't all the time with Woog. You know, they, the Gophers had some frustrating losses. They were just, you know, in the 80s they were in it a lot. But by the 90s, it was pretty rare the Gophers would get to any fro, uh, Final Fours. Um, I kind of see Moscow the same. I don't know if the Gophers are going to win a national championship with Bob Moscow. And they should have last year. That was an amazing team. There's just no excuse that they lost that game, honestly. They had it, and they let it go. It's that simple. They simply let it go by staying back, staying back, staying back, and letting Quinnipiac you know, fire at them over and over again. Quinnipiac started just, you know, like, we can do this if we just keep trying and keep firing away. It's going to happen eventually. And and it did. It just simply did. I mean, why? Why do that? Why? <laughs> it just was terrible. You can't just pull away like we did versus the, uh, 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 like we did against New Hampshire years ago where we simply pulled away. I mean, that was amazing. Where Maine, it was kind of both. Like, both teams were going at each other. You know, it's just, it, I don't know. So damn frustrating. So that's kind of my take on Bob Moscow. With that, yes, I'm a rodent. Go ahead and call me that. Squeak, squeak. With that said, we'll take a quick break and hand a fan interaction right now. I better hurry. back here on Brave the Wild, segment number three, fan interaction segment at Brave the Wild, at Brave the Wild and always remember to do hashtag BTWMN to keep things organized. So all I have to do is type it in and press latest and everything's in a column in chronological order. Why is everything refreshing? Well, I guess it's very refreshing indeed. Did I get a message from someone? It simply says yes. Okay, well that's nice to know that you said yes. Looks like Derek put up a new one. That's cool. Uh huh. Okay, interesting. I'll get back to that in momentarily here. Yeah, we'll read that when the when I get to it. Apologize here, I'm delaying myself again. Okay, <clears throat> we open things up with a poll that uh, Derek Felska did for his uh, uh, show. He'll probably be, yeah, I'll be reading it on the next episode because last week they didn't do a show. Um, he asked, "Is what Ryan Harmon did at the conclusion of Saturday's game against the Vegas Golden Knights worthy of a three-game suspension?" I voted yes. Uh, it was yes, and then but yes, but less than three games. That got the least, <laughs> and then no, and then who cares? The season is over. First place got no. 
Huh. Or, I mean, no was first place? Okay. I put yes. That got third place. The, the other one was Who Cares Season's Over, 27.7. No got 44.6. Mine got 23.6. And then yes, less than three games. I, I don't know. It's mostly because of reputation, in my opinion, though. All right, the Derek Felska lightning round hath returned da da. So remember the lightning round rules. I will not repeat the name over and over again because it sounds dorky if I do that. <laughs> so you just keep saying, okay, the next one is this, next one is this. And then when, if it's another person jumping in, then I'll say that other person and then I'll say back to Derek or Tom in this case because we have multiple lightning rounds in this in this show. Cool. So Derek says, does the Minnesota Wild organization really care about winning or is it in danger of becoming the Minnesota Twins where making it or, or, making it or being close is good enough and they hold on to aging vets, but shipping out younger talent because they don't want to pay them. I think we're, I hope that's not where we're heading. I would absolutely hope not, but it sure feels like it. Um, and then Johan says, are you kidding me? Part of the problem with this ownership is that he wants to win so bad, he always is, is all in. He is all about winning. Derek says, I'm not asking you, I'm asking Brave the Wild. Johan says, giving you my perspective and all that. So <laughs> Derek says, that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm like reading too much sometimes. Uh, they kind of are. They're kind of heading that way. It. I, I hope not. I mean, I, I don't think we're in any huge rush to give up the prospects. I would hope that the that Bill Guerin and such are going to be able to hang on to the young prospects because, I mean, well, it's kind of a part of you. You know, you, you draft these players, you have this vision for this team, the future with like the Liam Mogrins, obviously Rossi and beyond and beyond, but um, at the moment, I'm going, I'm going to say they're not quite there yet. I'm not quite there yet. That would be the, it would just be depressing. It'd be absolutely depressing. So that's kind of where I'm leaning towards, but there, there's some signs though, and if it's up to me, I am looking to get rid of Ryan Hartman. I, I, it's, it's, it's time. You have got to get rid of Ryan Hartman. You've got to. He's, you know, like Judge Zolgad was ranting about how he's not good enough to be behaving the way he does out there, you know, and, you know, doing all that. Yeah, no, he, he, he's not. It's exactly true. He's not good enough. I'm looking to move him if you can. It's just, can you move him? Is he like virtually untradeable now because of the fact he's, you know, kind of out of control at times and he's kind of tone deaf too. Like after the game or, you know, like after the suspension was handed out, he basically was kind of like, he sounded like, okay, yeah, it's on me, it's on me, and this and that. and the, But then afterward, he almost kind of said it, it's, it's out of my control. Excuse me, it's not out of your control. <laughs> it's not out of your control. And I, I know it's not what you meant. You meant it's not out of, it's out of your control as to what suspension they're going to give you. Yeah, it's, it's, that's still a BS statement, though, because um, you shouldn't be acting up in the first place. You, like, seriously, you're like one of the veterans on the team. You know better. So, I don't know. I, the Wild need to get rid of Ryan Hartman, in my opinion. Why did you have to resign him? Ugh, stupid. But anyhow, so that one obviously pissed me off probably more than anyone else. Um, Derek Felska? Okay, see, there I go, breaking my own rules. Sometimes the best video game comes from a less heralded publisher like Tecmo's Ninja Gaiden. The same is true of undrafted players, with the exception of Jared Spurgeon, who is the best undrafted. Uh, yeah, Jared Spurgeon. Technically, he was a sixth-round pick with New York, but yeah, it was like weird, though. He, and then he became kind of undrafted. It was kind of weird. I forget how all that worked out, but wasn't he a pick by New York? But still, yeah. Um, best undrafted player in the history that I picked up, in my opinion. Um, early on, it was Pascal Dupuis. That was kind of out of nowhere. It was like, wow. That was awesome. Um, I wish I could look at the all-time rosters a little bit better. But yeah, some well, because these are all draft picks, the guys I'm looking at. <sighs> He's way up the list, and obviously not that guy. Uh, Chrisom, well, that's a trade. You know, he wasn't a drafted player, but somebody you just kind of sign, pick up. Uh, oh, uh, well, Fernandez was a draft pick. Brian Ralston's way up there. No, Brian, 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 Brian Ralston, not Brian Ralston. Um, Dwayne Rollison's way up there, considering how he helped the Wild go to the uh, Western Conference Finals and what a valuable goalie he was. I think he was undrafted. I think so. Because I, I, I think a lot of these you have to go back a ways. Because it's been a while. It seemed like that was the one thing Dumpster Doug was good at sometimes. It's, you know, And he kind of had to during those days. Um, 
Patrick O'Sullivan. No, he was a draft pick. I'm just kidding. Whew. Yep. Uh, let's look. Well, this is. Yeah, he didn't start playing for a while. Brent Burns. Uh, I'm looking at all the veteran players on that team that might have been something. Um, was Bianton in the draft pick? Yeah, he, even even he was a draft pick. Wow, but I mean, he wasn't that good. He was okay. Did look he was a six-round pick. Brunette was a really late pick. Um, so on and so forth. Oh, man. Yeah, Chuck Cobus, so give me a break. That was a, not a good trade, actually. That was one of Fletcher's early trades. I'm trying to think now. Oh, yeah, it's crazy how, yeah, Manga took some of these guys to kind of come around. Mm, um, my brain is stopping here. Let's go with, uh, but I mean, I'm definitely leaning towards Pascal Dupuy early on. I mean, he was a valuable piece. Wasn't he like the second leading scorer for a while on Minnesota? But he had 48 points. Yeah, only 48? Weird. And the 0203 team. But he was a heck of a, he was a heck of a, uh, you know, a free agent signing. And he ended up being really good with Pittsburgh and all that over the course of time. He was undrafted. Uh, I'm leaning towards Pascal Dupuis at the moment. Even Wes Walls was a draft pick. So many guys were draft picks. <laughs> Lubin Mersekovich was a draft pick, but yeah, Lubin Mersekovich is not in the conversation. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> I've never seen a uh, 30-something-year-old enter the draft. That was kind of funny how that turned out. But um, right now, I'm leaning towards Pascal Dupuis and Dwayne Rollison. I'd say Dwayne Rollison, though. As valuable as Dupuis was, Rollison was better. Like, he was... Super valuable. Um, he really helped the Minnesota Wild, again, get to that Western Conference Final. I don't think he was a... Nope, he was not a draft pick. Okay, good. So I can confirm that. And what a career he had. Uh, well, how many games did he win overall? He won 227. It feels like way more than that. Huh. But he was on some okay teams. He got the Oilers to the Cup Final. Almost won it. And then he got hurt, like, in Game 6. So, yeah, to me, it's Dwayne Rollison. He, he, he's better than Pascal Dupuy or anybody else. Dwayne Rollison, it would be my choice of undrafted free agent pickups. That was the one thing Dumpster Doug was good at, was undrafted free agents, because again, in those days, well, I don't know. <laughs> well, first of all, he couldn't draft for his, for his life, and his trading was crazy too, tr crazy bad. Fletcher, I don't even know. I think Garen's been really good at trades, really good, Garen, and uh, yeah, Garen's been good at trades for the most part. Uh, the drafting's been pretty good, I think. Uh, the free agency has been annoying. Like, it just more or less, just, you know, the, the loyalty stuff is kind of annoying, actually, when it comes to Bill Guerin. Um, boy, that was a long-winded answer. I apologize. But it, it took a minute. Great, uh, great question, though. Liam Ogren, the next one. Liam, o Liam Ogren is making the trip across to finish up the 23-24 uh, season with Iowa Wild, as well as preparing for Team Sweden in the World Championships. Should this give us hope, we might see many more young faces in the Minnesota Wild lineup next year. I think there's a possibility, yeah. There's there's going to be some changes. There's going to have to be. Uh, Morty says Derek is asking great questions. Yeah. Um, there should be some changes, and I'm, I'm hoping that, that Bill Guerin is taken to heart like what I was saying. Like, not me saying it, but watching what uh, watching Ryan Hartman's behavior and such. And uh, now you have Felino, whose new contract is just starting four more bleeping years. And the injury bug is really starting to catch up with him. I think that's extremely scary when you have guys like Spurgeon and Felino locked in for a while. If there's anything you can do possibly to move them, Spurgeon, I think, is virtually untradeable. Felino is tradable, and I think they should look at that. I know he's the most valuable guy ever in the locker room and this and that, but you got, you know, it's not the end of the world, though. It's not the end of the world if Felino is traded away. I mean, surely, surely there, there's there's a possible replacement somehow, some way. There has to be. Um, I'm not 100% sure who to go with at the at this moment when it comes to like a big kind of tough leader type, but I don't know. There has to be something. But I think Ryan Hartman, you could replace him very, very quickly. Felino might be slightly harder. Um, Zuccarello, yeah, I, I don't know. I think he's definitely a possible trade. Uh, continuing, next question. Mason Shaw scored his first goal since his injury in December of 2022. Do you think the Minnesota Wild will tender him a contract next season? If not, if you were a GM, would you or would you not? Um, I'm debating on that one. It would be short. For, for me, it would be a short deal. It would be something short. Like, I'm trying to think of how much it would even be. 
like how many years, like something like two years or something in a small amount, um, in my opinion. Uh, you know, though, uh, it's, uh, yeah, maybe like a million a year or something like that for two years. I would consider it, uh, and it kind of depends on what you want to do with like Lucini, guys like that. You're going to probably have to make a decision between Lucini and Shaw, obviously, because you can definitely have young players on this team playing next year. Uh, Letary's here for 775. Uh, Shaw, maybe you're looking at about the same, or like 800, not even a million. But a million might be too much, because what did he do, really, this year? That, not that much. Um, his dedication and his passion for the game is amazing. But that doesn't necessarily mean you got to pay somebody. <laughs> you know, uh, that's the other thing. So uh, I'll say yes. I'll say yes at like 825, 850, something around those lines. I'd try that. And uh, it might have either just one or two years, though for now, and uh, it depends. Like, do you want to keep Lucini or... I'd probably keep Shaw over Lucini, I think. But again, there's that, there's always that fear, though, of Shaw getting hurt again. Like, again. That's the other sad part. Um, you made room with Mer for Merit who's Nadinov, which is nice. But, I don't know. Somebody's got to get traded somehow, if you can. All these stupid no-trade clause and no-move kind of, no move clauses... I'm sick of it. It's it's nonsense. And then you get the older guys like, um, uh, what's his face? Uh, like uh, the, the goaltender, of course, Marc-Andre Fleury, if you sign him because of the older age, that type of thing. And I believe Zuccarillo is in that same category. I believe so. Nope, he's not quite there yet. Nope, he's, oh, he should be, though. I don't know, but he does have a no-move clause, which is annoying. Ten-team, no-trade list. So you can't trade him to the Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he would welcome a return to the New York uh, Rangers, though. Matt Zuccarillo. And I don't think it would kill Kaprizov if he did it. That's one I would definitely look at, for sure. Where he could possibly make, eventually make room for, like, a year off. Like, you're going to replace Matt Zuccarillo with somebody good. You'd, you'd hope, like, a year off. Or a Liam Ogren. Um, or beyond. So on and so forth. Defense, uh, definitely, you got to have, you know, keep, keep Chrisom. I think he's a nice keep. Uh, obviously, he's you know he's not an undrafted free agent. He's just he's a drafted by a different team, but they waived him and lost him. Uh, Dakota's probably gone, so on and so forth. Merrill, I don't know, but galagoski has gone. So Damon Hunt for sure there. Hunt, Hunt, Hunt. Next. So yes, Shaw. I guess I'll keep him. Uh, I I know it's like uh, it's it's. I think it's a tough decision. I think it's a tough decision. Like how, how did you say it again? Would you or would you not? Um, mm, I don't know. Yeah, it's just kind of like I'm kind of debating on that one. Uh, but I, I, I guess I would. But it would be a small amount, and you'd have to be you'll you'd have to decide between him and like a Lucini guy like that. Uh, Derek Felska continues with with the suspension of Ryan Herman. It has opened the door slightly to give Maratuza Dinov a chance to play with more skilled teammates. What odds would you give him for registering his first NHL goal before the end of the season? I think there's a good chance. I think he's going to find a way, especially with the, uh, especially if, if they can give him more opportunities to be up in the higher lines, and they should, um, like second line and such, possibly with uh, Zooks and uh, the other one. Um, I keep debating. I keep blanking. But, uh, yep, on the on the higher line, though, uh, the second line, it's, uh, sorry, I'm going crazy here. Looking at some other stuff. Yep, okay, Marco Rossi. Yeah, he'd be there with Rossi, uh, possibly. Well, nope, he's going to have to be with uh, Beckman and Kudero right now. Yuck. So, but yeah, so maybe some some chances at times to play with some higher-skilled guys. I mean, it, even Beckman, though, you get some offensive capabilities there. And Beckman's a capable passer, and so is Kudero, I guess. Uh, but if he can be with Zuccarello and uh, Johansson, or move Johansson down, something along those lines. You might be able to make an, uh, a thought process there. Yeah, I was thinking, wait a minute. We already have Rosie and Jules Erickson Eck. It's not like Eck is out, thankfully. Um, but uh, at least to give Susan Dinoff some opportunities. I think he will at least score a goal, though, uh, before the season's over. Yes, I'll say yes. <laughs> I, I would hope so, anyway. That uh, Yeah, I think it's better than 50-50. Continuing, UMD's head coach, Scott Sandlin, recently gave an interview where he bemoaned the transfer portal, as well as the NIL, that's the money, and saying it is driving coaches away as they have to worry about recruiting as well as having the money to keep talented players. Is he right? Yeah, I don't like it either. It's kind of like, you know, we already have that in pro sports. 
you know, we already have that in pro sports, and now it's going to become more and more complicated, uh, especially like, like in college basketball, like Duke and all of them. It's pretty frustrating at the end of the day. So this actually triggers part of the Tom Hay and uh, lightning round, so we won't get into that just yet. At least I don't think, unless they're all responses. Um, Tom Hayden says, between the COVID year and the portal, I'm not sure which one of the which one the NCAA bleeped up worse. Thankfully, the COVID year comes to an end this summer, four years later. The COVID year, yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next one is, uh, we'll be interested to, uh, yeah, we'll be interested to hear Brave the Wild thoughts. But as a parent with a player in the NCAA, the portal is going to kill if it hasn't already NCAA hockey. Coaches literally have to recruit their currently uh, registered players. Players, it's a joke and it's getting worse. Yep, I, I agree with you. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think it's, I think it's going to damage sports or damage college sports in a big way. And eventually, yes, like coaches are going to run away to, I don't know. I'm not sure where they're going to go exactly. Maybe AHL or something or NHL if they can. Because, I mean, you're dealing with the money anyway there. But it's actually less annoying because there, there isn't as much, uh, you know, turnover. Uh, in college, you're going to have turnover constantly. So year in and year out, there's going to be some turnover. So, oh, boy. Yeah. No, I, I don't like it either. I think it's bleeped up too. I do. Continuing. Both, although I will say Leopold ultimately decides... Both, although I will say, ultimately, I, I will say, uh, Leopold ultimately des- decides how the team goes about achieving whatever goal he desires. What was that one? I think, yeah, I think that's a response. Oh, okay, it's kind of a back and forth. Uh, okay, that was a back and forth with uh, the uh, Johan earlier and Morty. Uh, Morty said, "Is that Leopold or Billy comes down to big picture versus wins? You can't make players try to lose, but you could." Make it harder by bringing up kids. Yeah. Yep. And he's saying it's ultimately Leopold who decides. Morty says most owners don't meddle at that level. True. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That could be a thing. It could be a thing. Continuing. So I do believe the Tom Hay and Lightning Round is here. It looks, looks like it was, uh, it was five, but I read two of them. So now it's three officially. But the Tom Hay and Miniature Lightning Round is here. Or no, no, it isn't. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. I guess they were responses. So it's like, it's kind of a lightning round. It's a lot of responses, but at least he put in BTW. So I'll I'll give you a lightning round anyway, Tom. So a Tom Hayen, (laughs) a Tom Hayen uh, reply lightning round. Uh, Fred G for four more years. Really? Yeah. Yep. It's terrible. Yep. I I hate it too. And then you still have uh, Felito for four more years. I don't like that either, especially if he's going to be injured all the time. Uh, we read about the portal conversation there. And one more. Um, Tom Haynes says, with Stramel in the portal, along with every other player in the NCAA, do you think a change of venue will help him salvage his collegiate career? I think it can. It certainly doesn't uh, guarantee anything, but I think it can. Um, it obviously has not worked out in Wisconsin. The annoying part is with two different coaches. But Hastings uh, Hastings is a play the veteran, uh, have, have like veteran players, older players, who want to be there more than just an NHL prospect type of thing. So, but sometimes those NHL prospects are freaking awesome. Like, like Brock Faber. Losing Brock Faber and the Govers was depressing. You know, it was tough. You know, losing Jordan Leopold many years ago. Um, as he was an NHL prospect. He wasn't like an elite prospect, but he was a prospect. Um, I think, I'm going way far away, sorry. Um, I, I'd like to believe it's going to help. Uh, and hopefully he's going to mature and grow. I, I mean, maybe the Gobers could use his help right now. He's a couple years older now. He's a junior. He'd be going into a junior year. The Gophers, come to the Gophers. Come, Stramel, come to the Gophers. Maybe you can help us uh, do something next year. We could probably use some of that gritty, larger uh, style player that hopefully uh, can maybe take a, a step forward, a big step forward. But I'll say yes. I'll say yes, it'll help. Jay Bushy, back on again. Great to hear from you, says... What's with the Wild almost blowing another third period lead? Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah, it's one of the reasons. That'd be Ottawa. Yep, it's one of the reasons they're going to miss the playoffs. Oh yes, <coughs> no doubt. They've been lousy uh, all season about that. Um, Tom Hand says they watched the Huskies too many times this season. Is yeah, the Huskies were disappointing. And Marty says good, embrace the tank, and I, I feel you there. Yep, embrace the tank. Yep, 
Yeah, I mean, at this point, you have to. And then Derek Velsko wraps it up with a late one here, but way before the start of the show still. So, yeah, totally welcome on board here. Uh, the Hockey News is reporting the OHL is considering changing their playoff schedule because of the solar eclipse that is set to occur on Monday. What is the craziest reason for a reschedule that you've heard of before this situation? Uh, that might be the craziest. That might be the craziest. Uh, it's cool to look at, depending on where you are. I'm almost tempted to take Monday off because we're getting, what, 75%? But supposedly it's going to be cloudy again. Like 1994, we had something like 75%-ish. It was an, it was an, a lunar eclipse, which is a solar eclipse that uh, the moon is like close, uh, is further away from Earth, so it doesn't completely cover the sun. You get like a, uh, you know, an orange ring around it. That's called an, a lunar eclipse. I know I'm getting into astronomy now instead of wild talk or hockey conversation. But yeah, I mean, that's the last time I got to see a... See, I, I didn't see that one. We got the 75% here. It was more like, a you know, the banana thing, like the moon, where it's like just one quarter of the sun is remaining. And it was cool. And that's the last time I got to see a significant eclipse in Minnesota because in 2017, it was raining. And I was freaking pissed. I was pissed. So I, I had like a day off that I could come in if I want. You know, I, I could come in, like say if it was a bust of a day. And well, I'm tempted to try that again, but it might rain again which is really annoying. Sorry, there I go off on my personal rant there. I don't know. Schedule, rescanning, uh, research, craziest reason for a reschedule that you've uh, heard of before this season. Uh, I don't think there really is, is there? I mean, there there probably is. Obviously, well, see, like a flood isn't really crazy. It's just bad. A flood or like a hurricane. Um, The, the, the roof collapse. The roof collapse of the Metrodome where the Vikings had to play on a Tuesday, which was unheard of. Like, And in a different stadium. What was it like in Detroit? We had to play against the New York Giants, I think it was. That was the 2010 awful, awful disaster of a season where we had a very icy uh, 18 inches <clears throat> with strong winds. And the colla- uh, the uh, it was the largest uh, snowstorm since the uh, famous 1991 Halloween blizzard of 30 inches. Uh, here in the Twin Cities area, um, this one that that was pretty crazy because like the the roof collapsed, roof roof collapsed, and then um, yeah, and then the Vikings had to play on a Tuesday in Detroit. So that's probably the only other thing I can come up with that was a really crazy reschedule. The roof collapsed. Like what? <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. The roof the roof was on fire. No, the roof was collapsing. <laughs> that was the Metrodome, of course, and then they eventually got a new roof, which was actually pretty nice, only to see the whole thing get torn down in a couple of years to build U.S. Bank Stadium. But it was a nice temporary replacement, at the very least. It was a very nice roof, and I do believe they cut it up in pieces, probably like, well, like in squares or something, to keep for other, I forget what it was, but they made use of it. And what was cool about it is you could see through it a little bit, it was a cool effect. It made the Metrodome look a lot newer, actually, at least when watching games. And I think the turf was changed, like, really nicely, too. But again, obviously, the new stadium was going to come sooner or later, and it did. So <laughs> it's a nice stadium, obviously, the U.S. Bank. But it's just kind of funny how that happened the way it did. So that's the other situation I can think of. This one, I think, is a little crazier. The solar eclipse, huh? Solar eclipse, but the eclipse isn't going to be during the games, though, isn't it? Like early in the day, kind of like one o'clock, two o'clock. I guess no. It kind of depends. By the time it gets up to Canada, it's going to be later in the day, I guess. Ah, pff, I don't know. Oh, everything is going to happen. Oh, you get the you know. <laughs> There's some interesting aspects to it, but I don't think it's like world. You know, I don't think the whole world's going to change or anything crazy like that. So that's how I look at it. Now I've babbled enough. I apologize. But great, great, great. You know, thank you. Great fan interaction segment. That was really, really appreciated. Really loved hearing from all of you. Uh, again, do check out the Crease and Assist podcast. Derek Palska, of course. Um, love to hear from you, Jay, Morty, Tom Hayen, MN Johan. <clears throat> love hearing from you. Really, really appreciate that. That was great. Absolutely great. And of course, Derek, yes. <laughs> no kidding. Um, with that said, shout outs to Minnesota Wild Global, 
Minnesota. Uh, that is a Facebook page, of course. Um, Minnesota Wild Nation. And, of course, MNW Prospects. How could I not shout out to them, of course, because I'm, I'm part of the group, but but I, I don't inter, uh, I don't write as much as I should. I'm, I'm more interacting and voting on things at the moment. And, of course, talking about the prospects the way they do as well and the prospect of the week, I think that's awesome. Uh, that'd be uh, Pavel Bennett and Justin Bakke of the Sound of Foghorn podcast as well. Does a great job. Justin Bakke, one of the one of the one of the nice guys out there. Like honest to God. Um wound up in a Russo article, I think it was about two years ago, and was kind enough to mention me in it. I mean, that was spectacular. Like, really? Wow, I got to be in a Russo article? Like <laughs> thank you so much, Justin. You know, always. So really appreciate you. Um he's a paramedic, I believe. I believe so. <laughs> he's a paramedic, yep. Um, great guy. And of course, Pablo Annette's a great guy as well, coming from Chechia, Czech Republic. Um, just really appreciate all of you so much and can't thank you enough. Anybody out there willing to do a five star rating on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any others, greatly appreciate it. And as I've mentioned 50 times already, Google Podcasts at some point, I don't know, I guess it's, I guess it's going to be no more. It's saying goodbye. So, um, YouTube music is already there and such. So, it's already there. Brave the Wild's already on YouTube Music and even on YouTube itself, but in podcast form. Like, it's a video, but it's just me talking with the, the one logo uh, there and on display. So, I'm not sure anybody's a huge fan of that necessarily, but that's how you get it onto YouTube Music, which is, you know, much more of an audio form and such that you can carry with you anywhere you go. You can be riding a bike. You can be doing anything. So, with that said, have yourself a wonderful week or so, and uh, go Wild Prospects. <laughs>